Uh, my take on this was to look at the angle of for the love of nature and sort of what can happen to you if it happens to you. Okay. And I think that when I fell down the rabbit hole was probably when I was a kid in Ontario and met one of these guys. This is a red-backed salamander. Uh, my parents rented a cottage one summer north of Toronto and I flipped a log or a rock and found one of those and was hooked. Um, so exposure to nature is, I think, a, a fundamental thing for a child. But then repetition of that exposure is important too. And for many years, I went to a summer camp in the same part of Ontario. And despite using, uh, learning useful things like archery and canoeing, um, my favorite things were nature walks. And um, eventually I became the nature counselor of this camp, uh, my doorway into interpretation. And I took the kids to many of the most famous things in the, in the neighboring woods, including the world's biggest pile of porcupine poo. <laughs> <laughs> then once you get past high school into university and you've still got this thing going on in your head, what do you do? You take all the ology courses. You take ornithology, marine biology, uh, herpetology, and if you're lucky, you take a field course or two. And I took a field course to St. Andrews, New, Br New Brunswick. Um, and so a whole new world was open to me there for a kid who'd grown up in the middle of Ontario. Then, once through undergrad, I needed to do something else. So I met a professor who said, how would you like to be my graduate student and go to Mexico with me and hunt rattlesnakes? Mm -hmm. And that just sounded perfect. <laughs> and so two weeks later, I was actually lost. And I was wondering, I shouldn't have flipped over that rock with the salamander way back when. <laughs> but we did find rattlesnakes. Um, they're actually kind of easy to find because they wave to you like with their tail. And they actually, they're saying like, stay away. But if you're a herpetologist, it's like, come and get me. So it's just a failure to communicate. Um, I didn't ever get bitten or anything close to that, but I did fall off a cliff and break my arm. As with five other very task-driven guys, and the quest was, well, do we take him back, lose two days of work, or do, does he keep going with a broken arm? And one of them said, well, his eye, the bone isn't sticking through or anything, so he can just walk it off. So, <laughs> so I did. But that's why the pictures were all bent after that, because I couldn't hold a camera. <laughs> but I, I decided not to do the desert, and I switched to, um, to lizards, um, very small lizards called skinks. And I found an odd one in a collection, in a preserved one from Bermuda. And it, it was very different from all the other ones in its groups. So I wrote to Bermuda and said, what do these lizards do? And I had a series of questions. And the, the biologist there said, um, I don't know, but why don't you come and check it out for us? Because they're disappearing, and we want to know why. So this is a Bermudian biologist, Jeremy. He's actually looking, he's hunting a toad in the dark. That's what that thing is down there. He can't see it because you can only see it when the camera flashes. But the, th the thing about this is, once you're a naturalist or biologist from somewhere, it's like being a musician. You go anywhere else in the world, and even if you don't speak the same language, you do. You, you, you understand each other completely. You have the same interests, um, drives. And the, the same things to commiserate about, too. Um, you know, l loss of habitat and funds for research, funds for education, and just how do you make a living doing this? And the toad eventually got away. She got away, but then she turned herself in later in the evening. She showed up at the front door. <laughs> that's, that's a cane toad, the same sort that's causing all the problems in Australia. Um, this fellow's name is Les Anthony. He's a writer in Whistler, but I knew him as a graduate student in Toronto. And we, hunted, he, we worked on his salamanders together for his dissertation work. And then we bumped into each other at UBC about 10 years ago. And we said, you know what, we should go and find one of those coastal giant salamanders, the, the rarest salamanders in British Columbia, or among the, the two or three rarest. And so we spent two weeks going up and down the Chilliwack River Valley, climbing up and down um, ravines, and sure enough, we found one. And so this, um, this picture is not a very good picture, but, and I just threw it up on the web, and it asked for, I was asked for many copies of it because this, this animal is so rarely seen. Um, <clears throat> Among the Bermuda traveling years, I met my wife. One thing led to another, uh, the, f the first being our son and the next being our daughter. <laughs> and we moved back here because this is where she's from. And as, you, as a naturalist would do, you expose them to nature as often and, and early as possible. And you make sure they understand that nature is not just something you walk through or drive through. It's a hands-on experience. So you take something and you say, here, hold this. This is our son at age three. 
at peak cute. He's, he's now 16 and taller than me. <clears throat> he didn't always like the things that I threw in his hands. Here, this is a, a slimy sunfish sea star. And you can tell by his face, he's not really digging it. Um, so he has learned to say, what is it, when I say, here, hold this. Um, but he's still, he's still keen on it, so it's, it's, he hasn't, it hasn't worn off yet, which it seems to do, unfortunately, with a lot of kids. Uh, our daughter was never fully into it, but she, on her own way, will, will check things out. Here she is um, poking at a, the slimy egg mass from a, lug, from a, um, a lugworm in Boundary Bay. Uh, but at least I know that my kids will never be sort of as lost in nature as some that I've experienced as an interpreter. One of my first programs I did working in BC was at uh, Burnaby Lake, and it was a rainy day, and we did programs inside the Burnaby Lake Nature House. And then we took them outside into the forest, and to, to, I think it was a bug hunt, and a little girl kept tugging on my jacket, saying, when are we going to go out? When are we going to go out? And I said, well, we are out. She went, no, I mean out of the forest. She, you know, she was terrified. It was so different because she had not been exposed to it. And you know, you never know how, how it's going to turn out. I don't know how it's going to turn out for my kids. I know how it turned out for me. It's, well, it's still turning out. Um, but you just hope that when you bring a child to nature, that that last response is when you get, you know, they're accept they're taking it in with their arms wide open. Thank you.